everybody, Patrick here. In this tech tip video, we're going to take a look at how to debug your workflows to improve your overall development experience. Let's dive in. All right, so in this tech tip video, we're going to take a look at how to properly debug your workflows um, to make it easier for you to ultimately develop them and troubleshoot them when things go wrong. Um, or your logic needs to be altered and so on. So um, I'll highlight some tips and tricks to uh, help you with your you know, ultimate journey with learning how to build sophisticated workflows. Um, so this is actually a workflow that I, I had previously demonstrated in a, a video. So if you haven't seen the, I think it's the query layers um, tech tip, I'd, I'd recommend taking a look at that beforehand. But um, basically here we have a, a very basic workflow where we're getting a, a hold of a, a layer within our workflow by referencing the layer name uh, from a layer within our web map. In this scenario, we're, we're getting a water lines layer. We're then uh, getting the, the current map extent. Uh, and then basically we're doing a query and we're passing that layer um, as input. So basically we're saying we're, we're running this query on our water lines layer or against our water lines layer. Uh, and then basically here um, we, we have a where clause where we're going to find all of the water lines that are of type or material, you know, cast iron and have a diameter less than or equal to 150 millimeters. Um, we're restricting it based on the map extent. We're returning geometry and we are returning all of the, the fields. Um, and then I think this last little bit here is we're just getting the number of features returned. Um, so how, again, you, you can quickly test these workflows is by, you know, using the sandbox environment, which I've uh, been using in, in a few videos here. And again, if we were to run this workflow, you can see, you know, here I can uh, return the, the number of features. And we already started using the network tab as a way to kind of debug your, your workflow. So here, if we go to the network tab, because we're issuing a, a web request to ArcGIS server, uh, we can see here, if we look at our, our header, you can see the full, you know, all, all the information there. But really, all you need to be really concerned with is this payload, which is the input parameter. So this is our geometry, which is coming from our map extent. This is the outfields and our, our where clause that are being um, passed to the query. Um, and then if we look at the preview, you can see here, this is our response basically that's being returned. Um, and you know, we have uh, seven features that are being returned. Uh, it's an index of zero. Um, and then here you can see these are the attributes and the individual geometries of, of each feature. So um, it's actually an easier way though to actually you know, digest this information. And that's by using the, the console. Um, so actually, if we jump over to the console tab, here you can see if I clear it and rerun it, it's actually logging all of the individual activities that get fired within our workflow. So here we can see we have a get layer activity, we're getting the map extent, we're querying our, our layer, and then we're presenting an alert. So this basically mimics, you know, this backend workflow here. So it's showing each of these activities, what the inputs are and what the outputs are um, for each of those. So if we jump back to the sandbox here, um, we can take a look at this. So basically um, in order to actually get this logging as well, there's a couple of things you need to do. Um, so uh, it really depends on the browser that you're using, but basically here I've got Chrome and here there's this, um, if you go to the console tab, there's this all levels section and you're going to want to ensure that you enable verbose logging. Uh, once you have verbose logging enabled, then you should be able to retrieve these, um, uh, you know, more fine-grained uh, activities um, within your, your your workflow as you as you run it. Um, so here, also, each activity is going to basically get run twice or will we'll get logged twice. Um, and that's because the first time it's run, it's going to basically show you what the inputs are. So we can see here, there's this for my get layer activity, there's this layer ID input parameter. And if we jump over here, we can see it's called you know, layer ID. And here I've supplied water lines, right? Now the second time the uh, you, know, you see this log, you'll get both, both the inputs, but you'll also get the outputs of everything that's available. So here we can see it's been successful because we're getting an output layer. And within this layer, um, you know, there's 
all of these other different properties that you can actually pull from within workflow. Now in our scenario, for our query layer activity, we just passed this entire you know, layer object as input, but we could also drill down and reference, for example, like the ID of the layer or the name of the layer or potentially even the uh, URL. Um, so this would be pointing to like the rest endpoint. Um, of that that layer. Um, so there's a, a whole number of different you know elements in here that you can actually pull from uh, using the uh, the workflow uh, tool. Now I'm just going to minimize this because it's uh, a little bit overwhelming when you first see it. Um, so if we continue to scroll through, we can see this is our uh, get map extent activity. This one doesn't actually have any inputs, but it'll basically just give you the map extent. Uh, and we can see there's, you know, the extent or the center point or the current scale. Those are properties that are available. And then look, if we look at this, um, I always like to look at the second um, listing of the each activity because it is designed to include both the inputs and, and the outputs. So if we look at the our inputs here, we can see this is our input geometry, which is coming from the map extent, which here you can see this is the map extent. Um, and it is being passed as our input geometry parameter. Uh, this is our input layer. Our outfields are set to star, our return geometry is set to true, and the where clause is being included there. If we look at our outputs, this is basically the output response of that query. This is where we can drill into like features and drill into each individual feature and see the you know individual attributes and the geometry. So rather than having to use the network tab, Everything, you know, for the most part that you need is included in this uh, console listing here, which makes it really easy to kind of debug and, and troubleshoot your workflows. Um, now, what's also worth mentioning is here, uh, you can see within features, there's this length property. And if we hover over there, you can see it says outputs.features.length. Um, and it's seven. And when we you know, run the workflow, we're getting seven so you can also use the console to determine what properties are available um, and then re retrieve those if so if we jump to the uh, workflow tab here you can see and expand this uh, alert you can see here we're going you know query one dot features dot length now um, it's worth mentioning we don't always um, display every single property available but in this scenario we're displaying the length but for example if i go into like the layer and add a you know go drill into the layer object and add a period we're only displaying you know four different properties like the id the opacity and whether it's visible but if you jump over to the console um, and uh, expand our layer object, you can see there's a whole ton of other properties available. So for example, if I wanted, I don't know, the URL of it, um, I could just go ahead and do layer.url. And if I click OK and rerun this, you can see here we're getting the, actually this is the URL for the feature service. You'd also have to add an ID onto the end of it. Um, but basically here you can see we're actually going into the layer list. And if we scroll over that URL property, it's gonna be layer.layer.url. Um, so hopefully that gives you an overview of how you can use the console uh, as well as uh, the, the network tab to troubleshoot and debug your workflows. Um, just to, to mention, uh, you know, if you wanted to like make a mistake or something like that, like here, if I accidentally said, you know, water line and reran it, oops, rerun it, you're going to see here, it's going to give us an undefined warning. Basically, if we look at our inputs tab, we can see that, oh, my layer input is undefined. And then we can look into our get layer activity and see our inputs are here, but oh, there's no output layer being returned. So that makes, you know, that allows you to then kind of rework and rethink your workflow to then go investigate and say, oh, whoops, I accidentally set this as water line. It should be water lines. Um, so if we go back and update that, clear our console and rerun it, you can see now our water lines input is returning a layer and our query task input has that layer 
Um, so again, hopefully that gives you a, a quick, you know, overview of how to use the console to then, uh, you know, better troubleshoot and debug your, your workflows. Thanks for watching. Never miss the Vertigis Studio Tech Tip. Like and subscribe below. And as always, you can learn more by visiting vertigis.com.